Let's now develop the third final test case for the product class. Specifically, we want to test the overloaded version of the constructor, and we want to use the mutator methods to, opt, uh, to modify the object states or the values of the attributes. And we're going to use the uh, accessor methods to inquire about the values of the attributes and compare it against the uh, expected value using assertion. That's basically uh, the big picture. Let's now click on the test product class and we will scroll down all the way to the end after the end of the second test case that we did earlier. And let's now start with the third one. And like before, there might be uh, some copy and paste we can do, but just in a moment. Okay. Let me also maximize the uh, tab. And do you remember what to do in order to start a new test? You want to put a tag at test and then public void. And this one should be, uh, let me just copy this one here. We're gonna reuse most of the uh, test product too because we're testing the same overloaded constructor over here, but we're gonna add in some mutated method call uh, in between, okay? So why don't I simply just copy all the way to here, okay? You can just copy from test product two all the way to its end, including the curly brackets, okay? Copy. And then I'm going to paste it over here, uh, here. Okay, everything compiled except that I need to change from two to three. All right, everything compiles. And let me now rerun the test. And one thing to show to you here quickly. So for if you want to only rerun a particular test, let's say for test product three, you can just put your cursor just around the name of the method here. You can see the cursor focus is here. And then if I click on play, run, you can see that one is only has run only test product three. But what if I want to run all the three test cases in the same class? I would suggest you actually always rerun all the test cases. It's something called regression testing, which I will cover maybe a little bit more uh, later when we talk about exception. Okay, if I move my cursor outside the body of any test method, in that case, if I rerun over here, it's gonna show me all the three test cases. Okay, it's a small trick to actually show to you, just came to my mind. Should we be happy that we actually pass all the three test cases? Well, we should be happy about one and two because they were really meaningful tests, but three is only just a duplicate of two. Right? So if you're happy with it, why don't you just copy and paste for 100 times and then you get 100 test cases passed and get a green bar, right? That's not a way to do it. You have to make sure every test case is testing some unique aspects and different aspects for your model class. That's really important principle. All right, so now for test uh, product three, uh, it's pretty much based on the uh, test product two, except that we have to show how we can use the mutated methods to modify the object states or the values of the attributes. Specifically, you can see here for get model, I think we are okay because the model has been set to this new string value, right? And we also have set, we also have set the uh, original price. So that attribute is also fine. But for the other four attributes, we have to call the relevant mutated methods. Okay, let's see how we can do it. For example, let's say for the finish, right? You can see currently uh, it's only now. That's kind of expected, but we want to set a finish. Why don't we say p, the context objects, dot is going to give you all the list of applicable methods. And let's say we want to set the finish over here. You can see that's a method from the product class, which will be expecting some string value. And what I will do is I'm gonna put space gray over here. Okay, so this is really the new bit we, we have added. And now let's rerun the JUnit test case. Let me um, maximize the tab, and then I will click on the run for the JUnit test. You can see test number three is actually failing by exactly which line. Double click on this, it shows to me it's line 89. It's about p dot get finish is equal to null cannot be asserted to be true, which is obvious because we have already set it to be space gray. So how can we fix this, okay? So you can either, you can say, well, I'll change it to be false over here. So p.getFinish equals equals now should be false, which can be asserted to pass by assert false. Similarly, what about p.getFinish not equal to now? And this is obviously true. In that case, I can say assert true. 
like that. Okay, and of course you can also try this alternative expression that's logically equivalent. I'll leave that to you. I can add two more assertions like this. What about we can use the uh, equals method uh, and also assert equals, okay, which we spoke about earlier. So let's now do it. So I can say assert equals, and don't forget you're gonna put some expected value over here, which will be, before I do that, let, let's uh, maximize the tab again, okay? So I would say space gray, and then p dot get finish. That is one, that is one. And then I'm gonna say assert uh, true. And I can make a long uh, chain of method calls using the dot notation, which I also explained to you earlier. So I can say p dot get finish, which is a string value that should be equal to the following string value that's expected, which should be space gray. All right. Let's now rerun the test. Okay, we're still failing, but we are failing other things, I believe. So now let me uh, maximize, uh, maximize this and let me run the test again. And now if I double click on the uh, failing test, it's telling me that I'm failing this line over here specifically, right? Okay, only this line. But I would say there's certain other things I would like to do, but you can definitely fix it later. But I would say I'll, uh, I want to go on to change other attributes as well. So what we just have done was the uh, p.set finish, right? I want to also set the storage as well, right? It doesn't make sense for the storage of, a, of an iPad to be zero. So what do I want it to be? Uh, let's say for now, we want the uh, storage to be one terabytes, meaning 1000 gigabytes. So I can say p.set uh, set storage over here, 1000. Okay, just uh, for your information, it's one terabytes. Apparently, let's now uh, maximize this. If I run it, it will fail. So double click on the failing test. It is telling us we are failing this particular assertion. P dot get storage equals zero cannot be asserted to be true. Well, obvious. What should that be equal to? Why don't we put 1000? I think in a similar way, assert equals will also be false. Be, uh, will also fail because the expected value is also out of date. So we should really put 1000 like that. Okay, so if I do the uh, rerun the test, even though we're still failing, but you can see if you double click on that, we're now failing this line again. Whenever you see the assertion failure, it is the first occurrence of failure, meaning that all the other assertions above have passed already. So this is the earliest one that we have. So that means everything before that has passed, but we want to change more attributes. Just bear with me, okay? Let me maximize this, so we're worried. We have set the storage over here. What about the cellular connectivity, right? Let's say we want to have an iPad that supports cellular connect, uh, connection. So what I can do is over here, I can say p dot set uh, set has cellular cellular connectivity over here, and then I want to set it to be true rather than the false default. Of course, if I rerun the test, I'm gonna fail. And what's, what's gonna be the first line that fails? If I double click, it tells me it is this particular line, right? Which makes sense. So now here is my exercise for you. Pause the video and go to your Eclipse to see, let's say you don't really change uh, the assertions themselves. How can you change the expression inside so that the assertion are going to pass, right? Let me make my, uh, say my question again. Exercise is you want to change all the expressions inside the assertion. You don't change the assert false to assert true. That's not uh, the way to do it. I want you to only play with the Boolean expression inside, okay? Pause the video and do it, and make sure you actually can pass every one of them. All right, assuming that you got some chance to exercise, why don't we see how we can do it? P dot has cellular connectivity should be true, which cannot be asserted to be false. So why don't we say, if how do we negate the true? Why don't we just negate from true to false? All right, and similarly, so has uh, this will be true, true equals true. You can uh, let me just be highlight. This will be true equals true, will be equal to true. Cannot be uh, assert to be false, right? So now there are different ways to do it. For example, I can say false. If I say so, this will be true equals equals false, which will be false, which can be asserted to be false. So that will pass. And what about this guy here? Well, that one is quite easy. So now we don't, why don't we just change it to be true? Because this return value will be true 
equals equals true will give us true, and assert true should really give us pa uh, pass. Let's go on, and then p uh, this will be true. True should not be equal to false. True not equal to false will give us true, which can be asserted to be true. All right. Hopefully you're still following me. Don't be shy. If you really uh, are having trouble understanding this, get in touch with me. I can explain to you. Okay, next two. This will be, oh, so here, true equals true will be true. But we are somehow putting some negation over here, right? Let's say I don't want to change this negation, right? In order to assert this to be true, that means the entire expression should be true. If the entire expression that involves a negation that should be true, that means whatever that's being negated should be false. Okay, hopefully you're following my logic. And if for this expression to be false, why don't we simply change this to be false? Because true equals false will be false. False being negated will be true. All right. How about this one here? We want to assert something that's true. Well, here, what you can do is, why don't we do that? Okay, let me just put a parenthesis. You can either say this will be false. That's pretty much like before, right? But I want to show you something that's more interesting. What about double negation? Like that. Okay, so this means this return value is going to be true. Being negated will be false. So this expression over here will be false. False being negated once more is going to be true. So when we say assert true, we will still pass. All right. Hopefully you decide that exercise and your answer was also correct, I hope. Let's now try to run this uh, again and let's see where we actually got the first failure. Okay, still this, that means everything above actually still pass. Okay, there are, there are two more attributes I would like to change. Uh, just one more actually, okay. So we already set the uh, original price in the constructor. So we just want to set the discount value. Okay, so I'm going to put it over here. So p set discount value over here what should be the discount let's say 220 bucks okay that's what we want and if we do that apparently we're gonna fail right and where's the line this line is actually failing let me show you one more thing I'll maximize this and if I uh, again double click and then this line is failing you can see uh, J units give you very very useful information expecting 0.0, .0 but the actual value is 220 uh, 220.0 so we're expecting 0.0, .0 .0, but this value here is actually returning to 220.00 so what should we do change the expected value in this case 220.00 okay and i can tell you that get price will also fail because now we should really subtract this particular uh, discount value, right? But we just verify. We run the test, and then if you double click, you can see this line is actually failing about the gate price. And it's failing because it's expecting this value here, but it should be 1489.00, right? It should be this value over here, subtract this value over here. And that's exactly this value here, okay? Let me put it down. It should be, oh, sorry. Let me just uh, choose this value over here rather than this issue 1489. All right, so if you do the math, it's gonna match. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, new price. Let's now rerun the test case and what are we failing? Double click. We are failing this line. Okay, that's the final one. So we have added the mutated cost in the above uh, assertions and hopefully you're following the story so far. I'm gonna do a tracing together with you in both debugger and iPad at the end. Final assertion to look after. What about this? This one here, it's uh, actually comparing string, right? That's it, that's the uh, expected value over here. And this is the actual return string value from the to string method, right? And now you can usefully double click on the top line over here, and then you can see the comparison. So expecting null, but was actually space gray. Makes sense, though we should change that to space gray. Expecting zero, but it's actually 1000. And or she changed it to 1000 as well. Expecting false, but it's actually true, right? Because we're just using the out of dates uh, expected value for the to string method. And also expecting this, but we actually get, uh, sorry, expecting zero over here, 
but we're actually getting 220.00, right? So we're gonna change that. Well, we can, well, there are two ways for you to do this. You can fix the components here one by one. So it can be space gray. Alternatively, you can simply just go back to here and just copy the entire line and then copy that and paste it. You can do that too. Okay, but let me just fix that quickly. So there should be 1000 cellular connectivity should be true and then the discount value should be 220. All right, let me now rerun the test case. We got a green bar, all right? So hopefully you're following the uh, three test cases I have developed together with you so far. It's uh, quite many lines of code we have written, but it's really important for you to follow the logic. So the three test cases, each one of them is really trying to test a different perspective of your software. It's really important. Simply duplicating the same test case and see the green bar. That's not the way we want to fool ourselves. So the final part I would like to do is to trace the code by showing you the consistency between debugger and also iPad. 